Hi everyone. Uh, so my name is Miroslav Mazel. I'm here to talk to you about Do Práce na Kole, which is a Czech bike to work campaign. Uh, but before I get to this campaign, I want to tell you a bit about the organization organizing it, which is Automa. Um, this is a 20-year-old Czech or uh, non-profit um, organization that promotes uh, efforts to improve the environment in cities around the Czech Republic. Uh, besides this uh, Do Práce na Kole uh, initiative, uh, they have several other projects. Um, one of these is uh, the Sustainable Urbanism Lab, which makes sure that uh, cities' uh, plans don't conflict with public interests um, and that they uh, don't uh, destroy uh, public, important public spaces. Uh, so this is more of a political effort. Then there's Generation U, which is uh, more of an educational effort where uh, people from this organization visit uh, primary and secondary schools and uh, they uh, have talks about sustainable transport. Uh, and then there's Zajit uh, Inak, which roughly translates to experience the city differently. And this is really about getting people to know their neighborhoods and uh, livening up public spaces. The, uh, this is uh, organized locally. There's a day where people from the neighborhood organize workshops, concerts, theater shows, uh, and more to really uh, make sure that people know their environment and have a, a greater appreciation for their neighborhood. Uh, now, as you probably noticed, two of these three projects are centered around modes of transportation. And um, really, this is also uh, one of the main focuses of this organization. Uh, and it's the focus of uh, this challenge that I am um, here to talk to you about today. Uh, so about this challenge, uh, how does it work? So first off, um, the process is relatively simple. Uh, the first step, if you want to be an attendee, uh, is to maybe ask your company if it wants to participate. It's, it's uh, usually companies that take part of this challenge. And um, even if your boss or superior says, no, we don't want to participate, you can still participate as an individual. So that's possible too. But if they say yes, then that creates an effort inside the company. You get more people maybe competing with you. And uh, there's a... Um, an initial fee to take part in this uh, in this organization uh, in this challenge. So uh, it's it's also better for you if uh, your organization pays that fee for you, supports you in uh, in this challenge. Um, for this uh, sign up fee, you get a um, welcome package with a T-shirt, um, and once you have that, uh, and once the uh, once the competition starts you bike or walk or run to, uh, to work. Basically, you can use any non-motorized uh, way of getting to work. If you don't use it, that's uh, somewhat acceptable. You just have to track it. Um, every day you track your runs or walks or travel to work. And um, if you happen to take the car or public transport, you track it. It counts against you, but if you, uh, if you uh, use ecological modes of transport most of the time, you, you're still able to basically win the challenge. Uh, and that's the last step. You win prizes. Uh, you can win prizes. You get entered into a draw. Uh, and then uh, each city has different prizes that uh, people can win from that city. Now, this challenge has been happening for 13 years around various cities around the Czech Republic. Uh, there's uh, typically now three challenges during the year. There's a 30-day one in May, there's a 14-day one in September, and there's a seven-day one in January. So showing that people that even in the winter, uh, you, can, uh, you can still take your bike or run or walk to work. Uh, why are we doing this? Well. It turns out that uh, personal transportation accounts for around 15% of all greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, this is an ecological effort to reduce that. That's 
one component of it. Um, some other components are really raising awareness about uh, the possibility to tra travel to work in a sustainable way. Uh, and not just raise awareness, but also make it easier for people to choose these modes of transportation. So showing them that it can be done, showing organizations, those tend to be involved too, that it can be done, uh, having people change their habits, having organizations uh, change um, perhaps the, the work environment so that it's easier for people to park their uh, bike uh, near work. Um, and also to motivate cities to develop safe in infrastructure so that people can use their bikes uh, around the city uh, more easily. Who participates uh, in, this, um, uh, in this contest? Uh, well, it's um, the civil society, uh, so generally people from the public. Uh, it's the private sector, so companies tend to be involved, as I said. Uh, it's usually companies that uh, encourage this among their workers, and uh, people generally ask their companies if they'd like to participate. And it's also municipalities, so uh, it's up to uh, cities to uh, organize uh, events as well as prizes for people in that city. And it's this marriage of uh, multi-sector uh, collaboration uh, that really makes this challenge work because when you have collaboration across all of these sectors, then you can have much more impact uh, because everyone uh, and address systemic problems because everyone here is involved. It's not just uh, one sector trying to push the other sectors into, into making a change. Um, if you look at what's been motivating people to, to get involved, uh, this is according to a survey. Uh, one of the main motivators is really improving the environment, making sure that, that uh, the environment is better. Uh, it's also finding community in the people who participate. It's um, improving their fitness. You know, it's, it's also nice to bike to work because you're not sedentary the whole day. Even if you work in an office, it's good to get outside a bit and, uh, and get some exercise. It's about lowering emissions, and also it uh, helps people uh, because it's, it's nice, psychologically good, to be outside for a bit, breathe clean air. Um, so even uh, the psychological impact is uh, important for people. Uh, this May's challenge had 25,625 participants. Um, more than 2,500 companies participating in 52 cities, and that's a significant in and of itself because all of these companies uh, and all of these cities are um, at least showing some interest in making biking work throughout the city. And these companies oftentimes make changes such as making sure that people have a place to shower after they uh, get to work uh, after biking uh, or uh, that there is a place to park the, their bike uh, in the, uh, at the company. Uh, but it also has some other forms of in impact. So uh, there's an estimated, just this May, uh, 739 uh, tons of CO2 saved uh, alone. Uh, from our survey, it, it seems that 99% of people who take part in this uh, challenge uh, plan to continue in some capacity. Just take that with a grain of salt, but it does show that we've, uh, we're showing people that it's possible to, to bike to work uh, and that they are enjoying it and see the value of it. And uh, this contest over the years has reached more than 130,000 people in the Czech Republic, which is a relatively sizable uh, portion of the, of the Czech populace. And this is individual people, this is not just attendees, so uh, with duplicates we did out. Um, so this challenge has quite a bit of impact. The reason why I'm presenting it to you today is because I've been involved uh, with a redesign that's coming to the system. Uh, so there's more game gamification uh, coming into the system where you record your, uh, your travel to work. Uh, so that's coming up. 
Uh, and the reason why I thought it'd be good to show at this conference is because it's uh, based around open source. So uh, all of these systems, the back end, the front end, uh, all of that's open source. You can find it here at this uh, GitHub link. They're using uh, the GPL for this system. And uh, if you happen to be from another country, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, try to replicate this challenge in your own country. Uh, you're, if you're from the Czech Republic and want to help, uh, you can help develop either as a volunteer using the standard uh, GitHub uh, PR processes or uh, part-time jobs are possible as well. Sometimes uh, you know, there's work that needs to be done and uh, Automat can afford to pay. Um, sometimes uh, you just need to pay before uh, um, uh, a dev project shows up. But either way, let us know about yourself and we'd be ha uh, happy to collaborate. Um, and this is how you can reach us. Uh, Dominic, uh, Dominica Lentarova is the project manager, so she's the main contact person. But you can, if you visit the website, you can also find contact links there. All right, I think we have a bit of time for questions. Yes? Uh, where I come from, the limiting factor of such initiatives is the lack of dedicated bike lanes. Mm. Uh, so the question was, yeah. So the question was, uh, in general, uh, there can be a problem with a lack of bike lanes, uh, and uh, the question is, how do we uh, collaborate with um, local governments uh, to uh, make changes in this area? Um, I, I would say that the uh, the factor here is that the cities are involved themselves, so. Uh, this topic usually oftentimes isn't on the mind of cities. By involving them, uh, this at least brings the topic up to them and they see that it is something to think about, to consider in uh, future plans. That doesn't necessarily mean that every city that uh, is involved will make huge changes uh, and introduce bike lanes when, where there aren't any. Uh, but it does mean that they're thinking about it more and there's more hope for, for changes going into the future. Um, also, I should mention that there is uh, another uh, factor uh, aspect to this collaboration with cities because cities can uh, use the data that's collected uh, throughout this challenge uh, and they can use it to make better plans going into the future so they can uh, better plan on they can see through the data you know, where maybe they should focus on uh, more, uh, which places would be a good fit for better bike lanes. Yes? Uh, what data do you collect and is that public? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear. What, what kind of data do you collect and is it public? Right, uh, so the question is what kind of data we collect and if it's public. Um, so right now there's uh, data about how the number of kilometers traveled. There's also data about uh, paths that people can choose to share, but um, uh, th there's different ways to record paths. One is you record uh, the precise places where you've been, um, but you can also just record the kilometers. Uh, so it's up to people whether they choose to share their path or not. Uh, but this is also given to the cities. It's not public per se, uh, but this information is provided to cities. Uh, and um, yeah, there's uh, there every after every uh, challenge, there's um, uh, like a final uh, summary of the challenge that uh, collects um, th that basically showcases data related uh, to mass data related to the challenge. So. Uh, how many kilometers have been traveled overall, how many people participated, uh, et cetera. So data like this. Yes? You get cities, uh, sorry, uh, companies to to each other as well as individuals. Uh, so, so the question was whether we get companies competing with each other as well. Yes, we do have, uh, uh, we do have, um, 
um, uh, sorting uh, co competition amongst not just uh, individuals, but also teams within a company, also cities and also companies uh, themselves, so people can choose where they rank. Um, yeah, uh, they can see where they rank. And we're out of time, so thank you all for attending. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.